All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let us take a look at problem 5-2A. This has us comparing a traditional costing system, that's one that uses one overhead rate to kind of try to catch everything, with an activity-based costing system, that's one that uses several activity rates, several overhead rates to try to capture what's going on with our overhead. Remembering the whole point of this exercise is we know our material, we know our labor, our overhead has to be estimated. Activity-based costing ought to ought to yield a better estimate than just one plant-wide or company-wide overhead rate. Okay, let's read on. Double Bounce Trampolines produces two models of trampolines for backyard fun, the original and the recently introduced Deluxe. The Deluxe model introduced several safety features that were intended to scare overly protective parents into upgrading. I'm an overly protective parent. I've been scared into upgrading many times before. Since its introduction, the Deluxe model has been increasing in sales, but at the same time, the company's profits have been declining. Well, that's a bad sign. You're selling more but making less money? Hmm. The CFO believes the company's traditional costing system may be to blame. That is often to blame in this type of circumstance. Currently, the company uses direct labor hours as the basis for applying overhead. Okay, so... They're using a predetermined overhead rate like what we learned back in Chapter 3 and we've been sort of using going forward. And that's our estimated MOH divided by our estimated direct labor hours, in this case, to get our predetermined overhead rate. And we know our estimated MOH. The company estimates it'll have $600,000 in overhead. So I know um, it hasn't asked for this, but I can... I've seen enough accounting questions that I know that this is where things are headed and you should, your radar should start to perk up when you hear about a predetermined overhead rate. Uh, you know, direct labor hours is the basis for applying overhead. When I see that word, I get kind of triggered that something is coming. Uh, the following cost data is known. Materials, 50 bucks uh, an hour. Uh, uh, for the original, or not 50 bucks an hour, 50 bucks a unit for original, 75 for deluxe, $10 per hour for the original. So obviously just working backwards here, the original takes two hours and the deluxe takes three hours because it's $30 and it's 10 bucks an hour. So two hours for original, three hours for deluxe. Now I'm kind of thinking ahead here and I'm saying, well, if I know it's two hours, 7,000 units, my total direct labor hours is 14,000 DL hours and my total direct labor hours here for deluxe is 6,000 DL hours so my total DL hours is going to be 20,000 DL hours. Now, I needn't have gone through all of that because it's given down here but you know some questions might might be looking for that number because I, I needed to know my estimated direct labor hours. I hadn't seen it so far so oh, I, I can work backwards here and calculate it but some questions it'll give it to you some questions you might have to do a bit of digging so I just wanted to show you it was dig upable I don't know if that's the right word we could uncover it in the in the data anyway estimated overhead divided by the estimated direct labor hours here six hundred thousand dollars divided by twenty thousand direct labor hours gives us a rate Six o o o o o divided by two o o o o of thirty bucks an hour, thirty dollars per direct labor hour. Okay, so we're we've gotten our predetermined overhead rate. Um, reading on, the CFO wishes to explore an activity-based costing system. Uh, of course, material and labor, we kind of already know, and we can be pretty confident in those numbers, right? They're going to be the same no matter what system we use. They're just to use the actual numbers. Uh, overhead, though, we've got to estimate, and he's saying, or she is saying, uh, do we have a name? No, we don't. So he or she is saying uh, we have to apply 
overhead and why not try something that might be a little more accurate because I'm feeling like our numbers are shaky here. Activity-based costing may be the solution. And so they have a bunch of estimated overhead. Again, it adds to 600, just the same number as above. And we're going to, rather than using one overhead rate, we're going to use several. We're going to use three different overhead rates. And in fact, when I see this, I get pinged to say, oh, I'm going to need an activity rate, which is just our estimated overhead divided by our total activity of each activity. In this case, our labor hours, receiving reports, and tasks. So 100,000 divided by 20,000 is $5 per direct labor hour. That's our activity rate for assembly. For receiving, $200,000 divided by 4,000 it's $50 per receiving report. I guess they've just called it report, but receiving report. And 300,000 divided by one, I can do that in my head, it's $300 per test. Okay, so we weren't asked about this, but you know, I just, again, it's like one of those um, reflexes. You see it, you go, I'm, I'm gonna need this at some point. And, uh, I'm sure that's going to come in handy later. Okay, let's read on. Under the traditional costing method, compute the predetermined overhead rate. Aha, we've done it. We've answered that portion of the question. It's 30 bucks an hour. And it says determine the unit cost of each product. Okay, we haven't done that. So let's solve that. So A, the predetermined overhead rate is uh did we say thirty dollars per hour we did thirty dollars per direct labor hour now the cost uh, per unit uh we have two different product lines the standard and deluxe it's going to be the material plus the labor plus the overhead uh, that we're planning to apply it's going to give us a total cost material and labor are just given here just up here 50 and 20 75 and 30 we'll just take those given numbers 50 20 75 30 and we said overhead gets applied at a rate of 30 dollars an hour and we know the hours we know that the original takes two hours per unit. We just kind of work backwards there. We know the deluxe takes three hours per unit, so let's use those hour figures. So two hours times $30 an hour means the original has $60 in overhead applied, and the deluxe is three hours times $30 an hour. It's $90 in overhead applied. And I just want to reiterate how we know that. And it's pretty straightforward here. I know my labor rate is $10 an hour, and I know the original cost me $20 in labor, so working backwards, if it's $10 an hour, it must be two hours. And for the same reason, I can figure out that deluxe is three direct labor hours. Since overhead is based on direct labor hours, I just take two times 30 and, two, and three times 30 to get my overhead applied to the standard and deluxe models. Okay, let's add it up. 50 plus 60 plus 20, 110, 130. Uh, 120, 195 for the deluxe. There it is. There is my cost using a traditional one overhead rate method, right? A traditional, they call it a plant-wide overhead rate. So we have answered part A. That is in the books. There's a I and there's I, I, <laughs> two. Uh, let's move on to B, under activity-based costing. Compute the activity rates for each activity. So we've done that, actually. We've solved that. 5, 50, and 300 would be our answer there. Determine the cost of each product. Okay, we got some more work to do. What we have to say is, given those activity rates we've computed in part B or whatever it was, given these activity rates, how much overhead needs to fall on our standard model and how much overhead to fall on our deluxe? So I'm going to say MOH applied. We'll do it on our standard and we'll also do it on our deluxe. 
So our override applied to our standard. I just say it's $5 an hour and we used 14,000 hours for our standard. So five times 14,000 gives me $70,000. For the deluxe, five times 6,000, that's $30,000. 50 bucks a report for our uh, reporting or for our receiving reports. Uh, 2,000 and 2,000 means it's going to be 100,000. 50 times 2 is 100, so 100,000 and 100,000 is just the same for both. And last, $300 a test times 200 tests. I think that's $60,000. $300 a test times 200 tests. Yeah, that is 60,000. And uh, 300 times 800 is 240,000. We add that together, we get our total overhead to be applied to our standard and to our deluxe. So 70 plus 100 plus 60 is $230,000 in overhead going on the standard. 30 plus 100 plus 240, 340, 370 lands on our deluxe model. Now that's our total overhead cost. We're interested though in material plus labor plus overhead per unit. So I want to divide now by the number of units. And I'm planning on making 7,000 units of the original and 2,000 units of the deluxe. So I'm just going to divide them. So I divide by the number of units. And we did this a couple times in previous problems. So if you're feeling like a little shaky, I would go back and view those. And what was it? 2,000 units for the deluxe. And we're going to get our MOH per unit, which is kind of what we've been after. Because material and labor are easy. They're just given. So it's the overhead per unit that's kind of a bit of a pain. So 230 divided by 7. 32.86, $32.86 per unit. Remember, this is a bit of an estimate here. So it's, I mean, it, we want it to be close to accurate, but uh, it's never going to be perfect. Divide this by 2,000, 370 divided by 2,000 gives us $185 per unit for the uh, deluxe. Okay, let's figure out what our products cost. We did it for... Um, uh, for traditional costing method. Let's do it for the uh, activity-based costing. So again, I got my standard, I got my deluxe, I got my material, labor, and overhead, and I know material plus labor plus overhead equals the total cost of the product. And the material and labor are just the same. Doesn't matter the method we're using here. 50, 75, dollar signs at the top, 20, 30 but now the overhead i just computed overhead per unit 32 dollars 86 cents for the standard and 185 for the deluxe so let's figure out our total cost here 50 plus 20 plus 32.86 gives me 102.86 75 plus 30 plus 185 gives me 290 for the, the, the deluxe dollar signs at the top dollar signs at the bottom and there we have solved it uh so just eyeballing this so you can see like this is the same company same situation just slightly changed costing system and basically what we're learning here is that under the previous system the standard was over costed and likely overpriced the deluxe was way under costed and likely underpriced and does that explain how we might be losing profitability i think it does right if, if you don't understand your costs very well you could be mispricing things and you could be making terrible mistakes so compare and comment on your answers from part a and part b above okay so for this one the way i like my students to do this is to actually use uh, a pretty specific sentence i want to say under traditional costing, standard 
units are what are they under costed or over costed well under traditional costing they're 130 a more accurate reflection would be more like 103 they're over costed they cost too much uh so they are over costed by what is that twenty seven dollars and fourteen cents and deluxe units are under now if one is over the other is going to be under for sure just the way this works uh deluxe units are under costed and again by how much it's 95 dollars and again that's per unit okay so comment on it well the comment here is it's not a surprise they're having issues right if you thought your thing cost $200, and let's say we're selling it to customers for $250, you know, you're like, okay, that's 25% markup. That's pretty healthy margin. Uh, all right, we have a 25% margin on our product. Well, it turns out, if that's what we're selling them for, we're losing money. This is a bad idea. So they're selling more, more and more deluxe units, but they're losing more and more money. It tells me they've got a costing problem and likely a pricing problem too. So... That is uh, no surprise based on the story that was told in the question. Okay, moving on to part D. Part D says, if ABC produces more accurate cost data, why is it not more widely used? I just want you to contemplate, you know, it seems like it's better, right? Like certainly here it gave better results and we realized our costing system was all screwed up and uh, ABC gave us better cost data and kind of shed some light on why we were having some problems. Why don't all companies use ABC? In fact, why is it just a real minority of companies? Very few companies use activity-based costing. And the reason is pretty simple. The data you need to gather is way, way more. And for lots of companies, it's just not worth it. There's a huge cost benefit to, you know, if you are gathering data for the traditional system and you gather DL hours, well, as the accountant or is working in the accounting system in the accounting uh, uh, area of the company, you're already gathering the direct labor hours because, you know, your employees are putting in time cards and you got to pay them. So you have that number just easily at hand. Now, maybe you don't have the number of tests or receiving reports as easily at hand. And, you know, you got to apply them to standard and deluxe. It becomes this like data machine. And I think I mentioned this maybe in a previous video, but if we had five product lines and we wanted to have 10 cost pools, and it just gets exponential, the amount of data that is needed to be gathered, where if it's doing a good enough job to say, oh, use the labor hours or use the machine hours, like one simple item could do well enough and it might not be worth it to have costs that are slightly more accurate. Now, in this case, they were way more accurate and it was totally worth it, but for many companies, it is not. Okay, so in summation there, the costs of an activity-based costing system often outweigh the benefits. If the traditional costing system is working well enough, there's often no need to change. That's all for this video. If you have made it to the end, folks, I am chasing 100,000 subscriptions. I desperately want to get there, and I hope you'll add your name to the list. I promise not to spam you. Uh, if you liked it, drop a like, and if you really liked it, drop a subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you soon.